Okay, so are we ready for another live here? So this format is really good. I find it when I do these longer videos, I think people tend to like them a lot. So I'm going to start to do longer videos. I noticed that with my with with my particular audience. So um, that's pretty good to know, right? That's that's good. So hopefully everybody's doing great. And today, what we want to cover today. We want to talk about some very empowering information to inspire, enlighten, motivate, have you to open your mind and to expand your thinking and awareness. Because uh, when you can do that, when you can expand your thinking and awareness and you can open your mind and you learn stuff, then it expands your ability to create more, to manifest or create your life in a more profound way, right? So. Hopefully everybody's doing great. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully good. All right. That's excellent to know. So the first thing I want to talk about is your mind, right? And I want you to observe how the matrix programs your own mind against you. And who's the matrix? We all know the matrix is our, our society of, of organized structure. School, religion, education, uh, media, all this stuff. That's that's what I refer to as the matrix. And I want you to observe how they actually program your own mind against you. And it's so subtle that probably most of you aren't even aware of it. You probably think it's normal. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is, have you ever noticed that whenever you're on what you call a good streak or something good is happening in your in your life. People call it, oh, I'm on a good streak. Or, man, all these good stuff starts happening over and over again uh, in my life, right? You ever notice that? And then, what happens? Then it's like this voice comes in the back of you, right? And the voice says, man, hmm, there's too much good stuff happening here. This is not normal. Then you start to feel like queasy and guilty and anxious and nervous because you're saying to yourself, this is not normal, man. I'm not. It's not normal for me to have all this good stuff happen in my life. Something bad gotta happen, right? That's what the voice actually says. It says, "No, man. This is too good to be true. Uh, I don't like this. Uh, yeah, I like good stuff happening, but uh, too much good stuff is not good, man. So there gotta be something bad happening." And then, voila! Guess what happens? Something bad happens, and you say to yourself, "Man, I knew this was too good to be true." Hmm. What is that? Ha what's happening here? So let me explain to you and show you what is actually happening here. I'll repeat that again. You have all this good stuff happening, and then all of a sudden this voice comes in your head and says, "This is too good to be true. All this, this, this is bad." And you get this w weird feeling in your gut, and then something bad happens, right? So let me show you what happens here. The voice in your head. That's saying to you, something bad is happening. That is the program from the matrix. It's a subconscious program. See, when you were a little kid, before you even got develop develop your critical faculties, maybe before you even developed the ability to think for yourself and all that stuff, you were being programmed with fear, lack, doubt, worry. And as you grew up, you start watching programs, the news, and all this stuff is bad stuff happening. And then that's what the voice in the head takes and identifies as you. So that means, in other words, in simplistic terms, the matrix or the way the program works, the, it doesn't want you to enjoy or experience your life in full harmony and peace. It doesn't want that. That's why the voice comes in your head and sabotages you. See how that works? See how slick that is? But you think... It's normal. And here's a big, big thing about it. We think, we literally accept it's normal to have fear, doubt, worry, to struggle and to have bad stuff happen in our life. A matter of fact, we expect it. We expect more bad stuff than good stuff because that's what's been propagated to us through the music you listen to, to the stuff you watch. All of these stuff hold on to you. See that? So what happens is 
having good stuff happen in your life is like a fluke. Powerful stuff right there. Exactly. Somebody co commented by our parents and our upbringing. Yep. How do I let go of past trauma? If, you want, if anyone wants to let go of past trauma, you have to accept the trauma. And you have to, you, the reason why people can't let go of past trauma, here's the thing. Because they put themselves as victims in the trauma. What do I mean by that? Well, they say something like, my parents did this to me because I couldn't do that. Uh, I, I have this because of that. They never accept for themselves. Now, look, I'm not saying that you deliberately went and got the trauma. But this is, this is how the, work, the universe works. And this is how the mind and your consciousness and emotion map, map works. For you to get rid of trauma, you have to own it. Don't, don't, don't own what the people did to you. Own how you feel about the trauma. You got to accept something like this. Okay, like, dang, man. <sighs> I know my parents are this person. They really abuse me. But you know what? I'm going to accept this because for me to break free, I have to forgive myself, which means I have to forgive them. Not for them, but for me. And you know what? Maybe what they were doing is because what were taught to them by their parents. You know, I always say this. Love people, love people, hurt people, hurt people. So when people get into traumas and stuff like that, it's passed down from their father. Maybe his, your father's father did that to you. Your mom's mom did that to her. So they have this toxic or whatever it is. It comes down and they put it on to you. But you think like, man, my parents don't love me. They hate me. Some, some people just don't know how. They show love differently. Like I said, hurt people, hurt people. Love people, love people. That was to them, that may be their uh, form of love. So, okay, so once you accept the trauma, right, then comes the letting it go part. So if you accept it and say, all right, man, you know what? I'm no longer going to be a victim. Because by being a victim, you, you if you're a victim, you're never going to release any trauma. It's always going to be with you forever and ever. It's, it's never going to go. So once you accept, say, okay, this is my responsibility what, how can I use this trauma? So what you do now, you flip the trauma and you make it into something empowering. For example, you can use a trauma as a teaching moment, as a tool. So, you know, this trauma that happened in my life, it really made me more perceptive. It really made me more aware. It really made me more cautious. It really made me more da-da-da. It has to be something positive. And let me show you why. Because all traumas are stored in one place and one place only. All traumas are stored in the unconscious mind. Your traumas are never in your conscious or your awareness mind. What happens is you become aware of the trauma from the subconscious. So what most people do, they try to ignore the trauma. They try to use positive thinking alone. That can't get rid of trauma. See, so you have to go into the emotional mapping. And the only way is you have to kind of what I call trick or not even trick, but I guess you could say it because your subconscious is so illogical. But once you tell the subconscious a new story, it's going to automatically accept it. So let's, for example, I'll go back again to the trauma thing. So you say, you know what? Um, I accept this trauma, but you know, this was a teaching moment. Did you know your subconscious now will start to change the meaning of that trauma? So if the trauma becomes a teaching moment to you, what happens to the feelings? They start to change. So instead of you feeling hurt emotionally, upset, panic, stressed, you start to feel more cool, confident, because the, the meaning has changed the emotion of the trauma. See that how that works? So that's how you can remove any trauma. First, own it, get out of the victim mode, and then you can let it go. And that's how you get the, rid of uh, past traumatic um, events in your life. All right. The next thing is I talk about the mind, the mind part, right? How do you cope with wanting more without feeling greedy? Yeah, that's what I, that, you know, the, the, to, be, to be detached is this. You have to want it without needing it. So what you're asking me is basically how to be detached from the outcome. And all of that has to do with you, with knowing who yourself, who you are first. 
So the first of all, the reason why we want stuff or we need stuff is because we haven't discovered ourself. Let me repeat that again. The reason we you want or need or you're in desperation is because you haven't discovered yourself. What is this guy talking about when he says, I know myself, my name is Mark, I live here, da da da. That's not yourself. My name is Jessica, I'm 24, I have a PhD, I went to college, I'm a CEO, I make good money, I'm this, I'm that, I have two kids, I have a family, I do yoga, I meditate. That's not yourself. My name is Rick, I'm good, I'm an athlete, da da da, da. play sports, 26, da da. That's not yourself. That's a program. That's a facade. That's a character. That's an image that was given to you by your parents. You're not even your name. You're not Bill, John, Tom. Pa All that is fictitious name. Just like your age. Just like the days of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Just like the years, months. All that was made up in this world we live in. So, who is yourself? Who are you then? So back to the question, how do I stop needing all this stuff? Well, if you understand that when you understand the self, that's when you will see the light, so to speak, because the self is connected to all things. The self is entangled with everything. So if the self is entangled with everything, there is no need for nothing. So the reason you're needing or being in a state of lack is because you're not connected with who you are. You've accepted the identity that has been placed on you through your parents, through my parents, all of us. We did that. Through birth certificates, through the ID you have, through anywhere you go, you got to put this information in. What's your name? What, they give you a number, a social, what do you call it, a social security in the U.S. This identifies you and they... That's not you. That's a, that's a tracking. That's how the, the matrix tracks you. That's how they, to so many millions of people, they have a way to, to find out who you are. So you're just like, boop. You get placed with a tag. Like, boop, 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 boop. And you accept the tag as you. Therefore, people struggle because, see what happens is, it forms an ego. It forms the perception. See, that's when a conscious mind starts to develop and have ideas and have thoughts and have views and then your, your mind adapts this personality of you that's not even you so the big question is alright man how do I find my true self how do I become that self so let me first of all let me tell you about that self once you become that self everything comes to you <laughs> this is so trippy here because some people don't even believe this. Let me repeat it again. Once you find that self, I'm going to show you how to find that self. Everything comes to you and through you so easily. You will get more money. You get more opportunities. It's almost like a, it's, people call it miracle. It's almost like it, it pops in your reality. Like, whoa, a mi from a minute I was this and now I'm that. Like, what is going on here? So let me teach you something about the laws of physics and science about how stuff works. And I'm gonna, so first of all, I'm going to show you once I'm going to talk about once you become that self, how it scientifically comes into your world. Then I'm going to show you how to connect to be that self. So okay, first of all, time is a trickery to you. So when people tell you your age, it's not real. First of all, you should stop celebrating birthdays. They're irrelevant. They're just going to age your cells more. Because that's not your age. It's made up in the matrix. Every time you celebrate a birthday, you, you tell a message to your cells that I'm, well, I'm older. Your cells are going to deplete. Years and all that stuff is irrelevant. You're not 25. You're not 45. You're not 55. I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's made up to your cells because they're so illogical. When you say something, your cells will hear it and start to deplete. Call it a pop taste. The cells start to de destroy themselves. So stop celebrating birthdays because it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. All right, now moving on to the next point here. Um, when the science, so that's it. So the time is a trickery now. So what they do is they create this linear time, the calendars and everything, and your mind got adapted to it. So, but time really is like one moment. And it's, it's, it's stacked upon each other like this. 
it's in different levels layers right so when you find a self and you can tap into the timelines the timelines now have a different uh, versions of yourself there's infinite versions of the self within these timelines and the self that has all the opportunities you want they exist they exist in these timelines how do we age? You age through entropy. You don't age through time. I'll talk about what entropy is in a, in a, in a, min, in a minute. So the trickery of time is you never, you never age in time. Nothing ages in time. Everything ages in entropy. We'll talk about entropy. So when you get into these timelines and you tap into the timeline, you literally bring in stuff like miraculous. So that's when I say when you find a self, things can come into your life so easily because you're lapping into those timelines. They already exist. All right. That's the science, physics of it. They call it block universe. Now, let's talk about how to find a self. The only way you can find or, or get to yourself, you have to connect with the higher self. Let me repeat that. The only way for you to get with the true self, to know who you are, you have to know to connect with your higher self. Now, for, some, for many of you, maybe you're new to this. Some of you have never heard of the higher self. Well, now you do. There is a higher version of you. There is a higher self. It's a higher version. It doesn't exist in a 3D construct. It exists outside of our dimension. So to get to the higher self, first you have to recognize it exists. And then you have to communicate with it. People call it, well, it's like communicate with God, you pray, whatever. Although, when you do that, you are communicating with the higher self. Alright? So, what is God? God is the universe in a consciousness. Did you know the Bible took out tons of information that showed you who God really is? It's in the book of Enoch. And in some places, the book of Enoch is illegal. If you can find the book of Enoch, it will tell you who God is or what God is. The Bible you have in your house deliberately took out, let me repeat that, deliberately took out information to show you what God is. God isn't a person, it's not a man, a woman that sits on a throne. Let me repeat that again. If you don't believe me, Go look up the book of Enoch. Did you also know that the Bible was filtered by the Romans? The Romans had an agenda. They deliberately nitpicked certain verses or scriptures that fit their agenda. If it doesn't fit their agenda, it was taken out. This was done in what's, the, what's called the Council of Nicaea. They took out reincarnation. They didn't go against what they wanted to teach with God. They took out who God really is. Okay? So the higher self is part of that. So once you connect through the higher self, then you become yourself. And I'll talk a little bit more about yourself. Now let's go back to the age thing. Someone asked me, so if time doesn't isn't real, then how do we age? Alright, so we age, someone says we age by our atoms vibrating at low vibratory rate slowly causing protons to shoot off and cause right that's de that's decay so okay so the question is let me read this who this dave um we age by our atoms vibrating at low vibratory rate okay slowing causes protons okay so my question is what causes the atoms to do that so well you may say time okay what causes time to do that well time is just an illusion what actually is happening is called entropy entropy is a force that when the universe evolved in this evolution of the universe, it, it's, it, the law states that everything must go from order to disorder. That's why you become a baby, you become a toddler, you become young, old, and you die, and you you go back out into the universe. You just you just dis, dis, disintegrate. But the thing is, you can never die because the, the universe doesn't have a beginning or end. You're always here, but entropy continues. So to answer your question, that's why you age because your cells have your cells are have to obey the law of entropy. Okay, so the concept of and think about this time is 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 very um it's personal and it's relative to the observer. If you you can go to a black hole and if you spin around the event horizon of the black hole, time stops. 
Okay, it actually slows down. And that's the only part that can stop entropy is the event horizon of a black hole. Everything, everything else in the universe must obey entropy. It must go from order to disorder. That's how it works. I mean, you, you can, you can do, you can, you can do this experiment in your own house. I can show you how entropy works in your own. Cle clean up your room, okay? Just clean up your room, put everything together, and leave, and then leave it. Don't touch it for a month or two, or even whatever. Or, or when you come back, everything is going to start to decay. There's going to be dust all over here. Things are going to start to move out of place. There, uh, that's entropy. So that's how it works. So everything must go from order to disorder. The book of Enoch will tell you who God is. They took it out the Christian Bible because if they left if they had if they left that information in, then people would would realize who they are. And the way the Bible is constructed and the way Christian religion and all that constructed, it has to have a deity, a person that has judgment, that has character to make the play run. And the book of Enoch Shot, shot that up so they're they were like we can't we can't put this in the bible we can't let these people realize who they truly are so i got let's make this illegal and in the book of thomas we can't put this in the book of thomas and you never find that so you know you you guys got to start to think you know you got to start to open your mind here man because you live in a a multiverse that things are just your your belief system the paradigm that you've been set up with, it's all bogus. It's really, it really is bogus stuff. You, you have to uh, do your research here. Set it up to blind us. Exactly. So let's go to the self. So once you realize that, okay, like for me, let's make an example. So once I realize that I'm not Mark, I'm not my age, I'm not whatever they put on me, I realize that intuitively and innately. But I'm also aware that I'm still in the matrix, so I'm also aware that they call me by Mark and all that. So people call me by Mark and they know they don't know me and I know who I truly am. So I know I'm the self, I know that. So what but what does Mark mean by itself? This I mean that I mean that I am connected and entangled with everything. That's who I truly am. This body, all of this, is an avatar. Can you briefly give the detail about the book of Enoch? I could briefly give it to you. So the book of Enoch, in the one particular verse, it talks about God doesn't, you can, God, no one can see God uh, because God is neither here, there, or everywhere. He's not confined to three-dimensional space. God is universes. So basic, in our terms, the book of Enoch is saying that God is a consciousness, the universe is God. And also, Science, quantum physics now is showing that the universe is conscious. So the book of Enoch is basically telling you that you are God experiencing this stuff. That's why they had to take it out of the Christian Bible. They couldn't people to know the powers because they had created a deity of a God that sits on the throne, a God is judging you, a God that is watching. And this explains why so much stuff happened in the world and no God comes down to stop it. This is why it explains like, hunger and billions of people praying and none of their prayers get answered because the world is still in the same state there's still earth there's still wars there's still food shortages all of that and there's trillions of people christians praying every day and nothing gets answered so it should prove to you that okay there's no person up there going on so some that's the truth the truth the truth to hurt some people but um you can go look it up for yourself it's in the book of Enoch. You know. that's right we are so powerful you're you 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 are so powerful that you don't even realize what you have. I mean, you have the ability to shape worlds. Repeat that. You are so powerful that you have the ability to shape and create worlds. Physical. You can use your mind and your thoughts and your emotion and you can actually change physical dimension to or physical structures in your world. Your body is composed 70% water. That water is electrified. Your cells conduct electricity. You are constantly emitting magnetism vibration. A matter of fact, your heart creates a magnetic field. You actually, you actually have a magnetic field around you that extends six feet from your heart. Repeat that. 
you actually have a magnetic field that extends six feet from your heart. You are radiating energy at all times. Why didn't anyone achieve it and told us? Plenty of people achieved it. But because the matrix controls a lot of the information, you didn't get it. Remember what the matrix controls? The matrix controls the outlet of the information you get. They control the media, predominant everything. So they filter out the information that's programmed to you. Your school, your university, all this stuff is part of the matrix. So they ha they control the flow of information. So that's why few will are few people and the few people that get it are the ones who do their just they research or they feel it they feel like this is not me I'm I can't you know I'm not this so they figured it out and they, they but but that's that's how it works and the physics now are short so you are this like light body of energy you literally have the power to shape your world so what stops you or what what limits your own power is this this facade they gave you they give you this uh, avatar. So they give you a name, John, Mark. They give you an age. They give you a personality. They give you what you're good at and not. That's what stops you. And so while they're giving you that, you're, you have a conscious mind now. The conscious mind now starts to adopt that, those beliefs. And that, that forms your ego. So now your ego knows your name. It knows what you're good at. It knows what you're not. And it knows your age, whatever the fake stuff they give you. And so you go around your whole life. Um, identifying as that and because you identify as that you become limited now because you're not connected to the light force anymore see once you identify that you cut yourself off because your focus isn't on that for many, for, first of all many people don't even know they are that so they focus now the ego so now it's, let me put it to you like it's like you you are a hundred percent powerful right so you have a hundred percent power right now that you can ship shape worlds you can create anything but your ego turns out turns it off. So you take you go from a hundred percent to ten percent. Let that sink in. Once you identify with who you are, like the name and all stuff they give you, you shrink down. You can only use ten percent of your power. Ninety percent of your power now is dormant, is sleeping. You can't activate it because you've identified with the religion they gave you, the name they gave you. The stuff your parents believe, you, you that, that's a part of you. And all of that is in a 3D construct. In order for you to manifest or create what you want, you cannot do it from 3D. Although you exist in 3D, you have to go outside and then bring it in 3D because you, we see the world through 3D. So if you're trying to create in 3D, that's why you're going to struggle. The people who realize who they are, they create outside of the 3D world and then they bring their creation into the 3D world because we observe and we see life as three-dimensional. So the ones who identify themselves and know their higher selves and know what the God is and know who, how the stuff works and understands their mind, they go into the five dimension. They go even higher dimension and they become enlightened. And what they do is they see stuff they desire from the etheric part and then once they see it and they decide what they want, they bring it in and then it manifests as a 3D object or situation or thing. Do you see how that works? So many of us, we are creating from 3D. This is why you we struggle and this is why it's so difficult. This is why you will get like some good results and then you fall back down. And that's why you get like emotional damage and baggage. And all of this stuff because you're fighting a 3D construct with willpower. And in reality, you have to just go outside of that dimension. And then you bring everything into you. And then everything like miracle appears. Remember I just showed you how the timelines work, right? That things can literally appear because they're stacked on each other. You just have to get into that timeline. And yes, meditation is a part of it to get into the timeline. You have to meditate. Meditation will always escape the 3D world. So something I want you to remember is you cannot create, you can create in the 3D, but it takes force, push, willpower, and you get very limited results. And not only you get limited results, but the results you get aren't lasting. 
If you want to be a true deliberate creator and master this stuff, you have to go outside of the 3D dimension. You have to go into the four, five dimension and up because that's where everything truly is. And then you bring that in as your 3D reality. And to get out of the 3D, someone says a key here. This is cosmic, cosmic, you know, these, um, when you put your names on the TikTok here, they're so transparent. Like, I, you got to, like, really look to read them. But it's, it's, I think it's Cosmic Melatin 1. Yes, Cosmic Melatin 1 says, so the, the key for you to get out of the 3D world is your imagination. Let's talk about imagination. When we say imagination, does it have, does it carry weight? No. I'm going to show you. I'm going to teach you something deep here. When we say imagination, what do we associate imagination with? Kids. When you think of kids, what do you think of kids as? They're just, they don't know any better. They're just having fun. They're illogical. They're, they're using their imagination. They're playful. That was programmed into you. But the truth is, imagination is the biggest weapon to free yourself. Imagination is the secret to your success. That's why they make imagination, they belittle it because they really don't want you to activate that power, man. People gotta wake up, man. This is why when you hear the word imagination, you don't put any big you don't put any big emphasis on it. You just think of your kids. You think of like, oh, use your imagination. All right. They deliberately program the that meaning to belittle it down, but yet imagination is the most powerful energetic force that creates worlds. If you don't have imagination, nothing can exist. How do you think the matrix was created? Imagination, the same thing they, they're, they're putting down, they use it to create the stuff. How do you think a car was created? How do you think a house was created? Someone's imagination. And if they throw it right in front of your face and yet you don't even see it, they st you still belittle it. Every single thing that you can conceive, the, the, the bo this bottle I'm touching, it was created through an imagination. The car I'm sitting in, every single object, inanimate object, was, in, was once in the mind of a someone's imagination. Someone says it's source, not imagination. Let's talk about that. What is source? Can someone tell me what source is? Source speaks to us when we listen. Yes, but again, what is source? Who is source? You ready for the answer? You are a part of source. So if you're source, you're a part of that imagination. See that? Source, but basically what he's saying, what is source? Source is energy. The energy that resonates in your body is entangled with the universe. And I can I can get um I can actually point this to you or kind of help you to prove this to so you can understand this. So where did you come from? Does anybody know that? Now, listen, I'm speaking on a deeper level here. Okay? So, so don't tell me I came from my parents. No, no, I want to know, where do you, where do humans, where does the earth, wh what started all of this? Where was the beginning or was there a beginning of all of this? Can someone tell me that? Someone says we birthed the universe. Actually, we don't. We didn't birth the universe. We are the universe. So let me let me explain to you. Someone says God made us out of dirt. That is actually incorrect. Physics and science shows us that. So let me show you how this stuff works. So you look at your body. Your body is made up of cells. Break your cells down. What happens with the cells? We can see the molecules of the cells. Let's go a little further. Break the molecules down. What can we see? We go into the atomic quantum world. 
we see the source, we see the what people call God particle, we see the Higgs boson that gives masses to the particles. Without the Higgs boson, nothing can exist. The Higgs boson is basically the particle that responds for giving all the other particles energy or mass so they can create. So we see the Higgs boson, we see the photons, we see the electrons, we see the gluons, we see the muons. If we go even deeper, you see the, th the strings. Now we know that all matter in the universe is composed of strings, tiny vibrating energy, and they're already vibrating. You pluck them, they vibrate and send signals to the entire universe. That's who you are. Where does that come from? It, come, it came from a singularity, a point that exploded and created pl plasma. The plasma cooled, the plasma started to form protons, pro matter, antimatter. They disintegrated, they spread out. All of that came. And that's who you are. What happens over, over what you call millions of times of eons as the universe evolutionizes and continues, things started to, gravity created a spin, the rocks, the meteorite, it clumped together over time, it's created stars, the gases, they compactified. When the gases compactified, they create great heat, they had nuclear fusion, nuclear fission, plasma exploded, these stars created a great amount of energy, they created ice, water, H2O, complex, small, small, uh, mo molecules formed, H2O, then the Earth started to form, it composed for billions of years, then you had single form of life, they come in, and all of these things made you through a long, what we call a long process of time, but in actually in, in the universe, in universe time, there is no time, it's a very small thing, because that, so, that's what source is, so they're not going to teach you that, they're going to tell you that someone made you from dirt, they're going to tell you that is a guy in the sky that did all of that stuff. Because it, it because they have to tell you that because it has to fit the narrative that they have to create for you. So do you see how it works? Why do you think you have the power to like heal yourself? It's called the placebo effect, which is still a mystery to this day. No one, not not no, not an epidemiologist, a biologist, your doctor, no one can tell you how the placebo works and why it works. No one can tell you the mechanism behind it. They just know it works. They're still studying it right now. So, what does that say about you? <clears throat> miracles. How do you perform miracles? What people call miracles. They do that through the placebo, their belief. They pray to something, they pray, and then something happens. But in reality, when you pray, you're really praying to yourself. You're really praying to the universe. People don't get that. That's why it comes down. So, based, someone asked me a question here and says, based on your, on your opinion, what happens after death? So, I believe that we have different, different levels of experience. So, we're here in this three-dimensional di three world, so we're experiencing as human beings, right? So we have consciousness. So I believe after our consciousness leaves, we form another experience. So I believe death is just a transition. It's just like another form of existence. You go First, you go back into the universe. And of course, quantum physics also now proves this, because I'm going to show you now what happens at death. And they've done this, they examined someone's brain when this person was actually dying and they seen, it is true that the brain replays all your memories of your life in like split seconds. So the brain actually fires off electrochemical signals. After death, the brain will actually fire us off. So the brain is reliving your life in like a, a one, a 20 second span. You see your entire life flash before you. So when someone says, I see my entire life flash before me, that's actually true. So now, what they notice is now, they notice... In the brain now, they have this thing called microtubule. And the microtubule is where the quantum fluctuations of the energy. In other words, they believe that's where your consciousness resides. And you notice after death, the consciousness, the microtubules, those quantum fluctuations, they go out into the universe. But guess what? They notice something else. They notice when someone has a near-death experience and they see the, the those microtubules, they fire off and that quantum information goes out into the universe. Guess what happens? When they resuscitate the person... Guess what? They notice the information comes back in and it quantifies and this person becomes alert again. So, you see what I'm showing you here? Your consciousness is alive. So even when he leaves the body, 
it still goes out somewhere. So you're somewhere else. You know, your body, this is not you. Who you are is what you think, your awareness. That Your body is just a, a vehicle or a tool that you, you, you use to control this three-dimensional world. To, to interpret the environment, to experience the environment, etc., etc. Uh, do you do you guys understand here? All right. Okay. So that is the true essence of who you are. Question, guys. That's basically what I really wanted to leave you with today so I have to cut this um, live short because someone called me and I, I forgot I had an appointment so we'll continue again and I just wanted to give you some information so that you can just use it you can build your consciousness you can understand how stuff work and uh, we'll pick up again thank you hopefully everybody can expand and see bigger see you